Today, I get to mess around with Michael Harding's amazing lapis lazuli blue. It's the original blue that they used on the Virgin Mary's clothes in Renaissance times. It's a fantastic smoky blue made from ground crystals from Afghanistan. It really is a bit special. It was later replaced with modern, more affordable ultramarine blue. And I've got that here for comparison just so that you can see the difference. And the ultramarine is so much more vivid and saturated a blue, you can see why people switched over to it, I guess, but I think the lapis has an awful lot going for it. It's soft and smoky and subtle and rich, and I love it. I'm going to mix it first with a little bit of Kremnitz white, lead white. I'm going to stick to softer colours, lower tint strength colours, because the lapis is a gentle colour and it needs to be treated carefully. It would be very easy to overpower it with more modern pigments. So I'm just going to stick to some more traditional, larger particle size pigments. So here's the lapis with the Kremnitz white. It's making a, a more lavender blue, but very soft and subtle. With the ultramarine into the same Kremnitz, you can see that the colour we're achieving is much deeper because the tint strength of the ultramarine is much higher. We're also getting more saturated blue, as you would expect. So taking the lapis now and mixing it with some other colours, here it is with the lovely lead tin yellow light. Love this colour too. Rich, glowing, soft yellow. And putting the lapis into that, gosh, that's making a gorgeous, soft duck egg. Really lovely. There's a body to it. You may be able to hear it. The crystalline nature of the lapis is really apparent when you start to mix it. And these other colours, the lead tin yellows and the next one, the Naples yellow, also have quite a significant body to them. They've got large particles and you can feel that when you're mixing them. So if we try genuine Naples yellow light with the lapis, I'm expecting a slightly stronger green, but not too strong because the Naples yellow is also quite a soft, low intensity colour. And that's lovely, real sort of soft spring green a little more lapis moves it more to something quite similar to the next colour we're going to use, which is Terra Verte. Terra Verte on its own, a gorgeous, glassy, again, slightly crystalline, earthy green, but mixed with the lapis just gives us these beautiful aqua colours. I'm using it a white palette in the hope that you can see the potential here for glazing with this. They're so soft, these colours, they're gorgeous. And the last mix I'm going to try is with traditional rose madder. On its own, the most beautiful red, but mixed with, with the lapis, it should give us some smoky, soft lilac colours. I've just clipped the green there, so I'm going to take some more blue. So mixed into the rose madder, we're getting a really lovely, soft, organic violet there. That's really lovely. I think this colour is best treated carefully and used on its own for special work. I think mixed into a wider ranging palette, you might lose it quite easily, but on its own, I think, and with these other softer colours, I think it really is very special. <laughs> 